that from the mound. It was nice out there. Asheville. Broke it. We'll call this special workshop meeting of Jacksonville City Council of the Water. Uh, we'll begin uh, by everybody standing for the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Can you please be seated. Uh, we've each been provided a copy of the uh, proposed agenda for tonight's meeting along with the consent items at this time I'll indicate a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Or is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? The first item tonight on our workshop agenda will be the bid award for a water supply a mains contract number two. And I assume that you're going to present this, right? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor, Council. I thought. This evening, I'd begin with a little background of how we got here because this is a portion of an overall much larger project. This began in 2002. The state enacted the Coastal Plains Capacity Use Rules, which required water providers such as the City of Jacksonville to reduce the amount of water that they were permitted to withdraw from the Black Creek Aquifer. These reductions were phased, and they were phased in three steps. The first step went into effect in 2008 and it required the withdrawal reduction of about 20 of 25 percent to the city of Jacksonville that equivalated out to about 1 million gallons per day. In August of 2013 we faced a second withdrawal reduction of our, our permitted capacity and that again was about 1 million gallons per day. In 2018 is the third and final step that they've laid out under those initial roles. However, recently they've released some criteria that if you can meet those criteria, you may delay that additional reduction. And there are, there are four specific criteria, and right now the city's investigating uh, how we could comply with those or what we would need to do to comply with those. Um, so it may be that we do not we do not have to take that last reduction, but currently we are sitting with about two million gallons per day of permitted use of the Black Creek Aquifer. In 2002, right after those rules came out, we began invest realizing that impact. We began investigating what the city would need to do for supply water recognizing that we could face possibly losing 75 percent of our permitted capacity basically we looked at other aquifers we looked at surface water treatment and eventually determined that the only viable source was the Castlehane aquifer and that's because of ava availability and the amount of water that's actually available in the aquifer itself so it could actually support the city. Um, unfortunately, the Castlehane Aquifer is good water, but not as good as that in the Black Creek. So we're forced to treat our water. So that caused a very large project that you're familiar with, which is our water system improvements project. Um, to date, since essentially 2004, we have built a water treatment facility currently operates at 3 million gallons a day. It's expandable up to 8 million gallons a day. And to expand, all we have to do is literally put the filters in the membranes that are there. Of course, we have to have the supply water, but the plant itself, the infrastructure is there. All we have to do is install the filters. We have constructed 20 Castlehane wells. We have constructed about 75,000 feet of water main. Uh, that water main is in the ground and it ran all through the city. Uh, it went through Northwoods, Williamsburg, down Western Boulevard, down 17, um, through the Commons area. So, in, I think it's important to note that that water main ran through already developed areas. So the businesses and the homeowners 
worked very well with the city in laying that, that initial water main. Uh, we also installed 15,000 feet of concentrate line that carries the reject water from the water treatment plant out to the new river. Um, that actually runs through Northwoods. And this contract before you tonight is the last major piece of this overall project. And it's for 15,000, about 15,300 feet of water main in two areas. One is in the Commons area and one is down Ramsey Road. That contract is broken into two pieces. We call those Schedule 1 and Schedule 2. Um, Schedule 1 is in the Commons area, and I'll show you a map of this in just a moment. But it entails about 6,400 feet of 12 inch water main, and it will pick up the Piney Green well. If you'll recall, we did a project where we actually piggybacked on Wassa and ran a 6 inch water main down Piney Green Road. So currently, the there's a water line from our Piney Green well, which is near the intersection of uh, Country Club Drive and Piney Green Road, up to Empire. So it currently terminates on Empire. This project will bring it from Empire through the Commons up to our Commons North well, which is across from, let's see, I believe that's the elementary school on Commons Drive yes. North. Schedule two is along Ramsey Road. We currently have a 24 inch water main that runs from the Commons area through the McRae property straight across to Ramsey Road. And it terminates on the other side of Ramsey Road. So this will pick up that water main and carry it down to Miracle Meadows. Um, for those of you not familiar with where Miracle Meadows is, it's just past the intersection of Drummer Kellum and Ramsey Road. So here's the map that I referred to just a moment ago. You can see the beginning and the beginnings up here. Glenn's going to take care of me in just a moment so I can draw. But schedule one will start up near. Move back one slide, please. There it goes. We both clicked at the same time. We'll start up near across from the elementary school and actually run down the side property line of the elementary school. It comes straight across Common Drive North and run along the elementary school property to Northside High School and then along the rear of their property in this area and then follow that along behind the homes and follow existing drainage ditches in this area coming up to, and this road is Chastain, coming up to Chastain, and then run across existing city property to Empire. So really the impact is going to be minimal on the homeowners in this area. The real impact will be along Empire Boulevard where we actually follow the right of way. So there could be some lane closures uh, in that area. And there is a median there so that we will have to work around. Schedule two, I mentioned, is along Ramsey Road. It starts, uh, there's no real identifying mark. This small site you see here is a city well site that we've reserved for the future. Uh, the county transfer station is up in further in that area. So it'll parallel Ramsey Road and run out to Miracle Meadows. The first well house is right here. And then you, if you look way in the back off the road, we have another well house. So the, the section from where we pick up to the first well will be a 12 inch main and the portion running through the fields will be a six inch main. We opened bids on February 6th. Uh, we received 10 bids. The lowest bidder was TA Loving Company with a bid of $562,592. Um, the highest bid was about $980,000, so there was a pretty big difference in bids. The en engineer's estimate was right at a million dollars, um, and our funding source is the State Revolving Loan Fund. It's already funded as part of the overall larger project. We have talked to TA Loving about their bid. They stand behind their bid, 
and we've actually worked on several projects with TA Loving in the past and have not had any problems. Um, and I will note that one of those projects that they had was to install about 7,000 of that raw water main that we installed under the first contract. With that, our recommendation to you tonight is to award the contract to TA Loving in the amount of $562,592.50, contingent upon the state approving all of the required documentation that we have to submit, and that is for the state revolving loan fund. Any two, questions? Two important things that we would like to mention. In order to get to the full capacity of the plant, we will over time have to continue to expand the well fill. One of the things that Wally and the utilities folks have been recently doing is working with Dr. Spruill to look at some of our existing wells to determine can they produce more water than they're currently permitted for. Obviously, by doing that, we have a minor expense with a tremendously large gain. I apologize for not remembering which well is it that you just recently studied? Deerfield. We just recently studied Deerfield well, and the 24-hour <coughs> test that we ran showed that that well may be capable of 1,000 or 1,100 gallons per minute. And right now that well is permitted at 600 gallons a minute. So it's almost double. Um, as part of that effort, we're also, Dr. Sproul <coughs> thinks, and this is his term, that that well is in a sweet spot and thinks that he may be able to identify another uh, well site in that general area where we could get a, essentially a sister well of the same capacity. So that would be a large gain for little revenue compared to what we've expended so far. And, and that's the point. I mean, here you're, you're connecting two to three additional wells for a half a million dollars. If we can go back and study our current wells and find that they can produce more, you have very little piping expense. All you really have is the expense of upgrading pumps and possible well houses. The other thing that we would point out is the work that Ron is leading the city on relative to the aquifer studies that are in conjunction with Onwasa and the base. By using Dr. Spruill and a modern model for projecting where we should be putting these wells, we're not only getting the protection of saltwater intrusion from the base, we're also getting better capacity out of some of our new wells that we're putting in. Uh, relative to this project, though, we would be happy to answer questions and we certainly recommend you approve the bid. Just a, just a general information question. When, when they made a presentation a couple of years ago about the, uh, the Black Creek Aquifer, uh, there was a statement made that it appeared that the aquifer was actually recharging quicker than what was anticipated when the state made the, the rules and so forth. Is that still part of the study? Are you looking at uh, the recharge? Is that something that you're looking at to? Part, part of the overall study will be to look at the Black Creek as well as the, uh, the uh, Castle Hain to, to also look at the salt water where the, the barrier is for both well systems, which is part of the reason why the state basically cut back on the Black Creek because they didn't have any empirical information, but they were concerned with the level that it was that it was going to start drawing salt water in. So if we can also demonstrate that, you know, all that will help go back and, and get some of those restrictions lifted. And I think we too would also like to demonstrate that you can't treat the whole aquifer, you know, just like one thing because just like Wally mentioned, the sweet spot around Deerfield. Every aquifer is different, you know, how it's constructed in an area. So we may be able to prove, even if the whole back Black Creek can't seek relief, that we might be able to get relief in our area based on actual uh, monitoring well data. You know, so that, it's not going to be a quick thing, but, but, you know, that's the path that we're on with establishing a series of monitoring wells in all the aquifers to not only look at what's available water-wise, but also where the freshwater, saltwater barrier is. Is there a blending of that water now? Is it Currently we do. We Our average daily demand is somewhere around four and a half million gallons a day. And we are pumping three from the Castle Hain and treating it actually slightly more than three. We're, we're providing three million gallons of finished water from our water treatment plant 
and about one and a half million gallons a day from the Black Creek. So and that is blended, but it's treated, the Castle Hain is treated before it's sent to the system with the Black Creek. But it's not totally blended. In other words, you know, depending on where you, where you sit in the distribution system, you some of your more. water is primarily Black Creek water. In areas where both the Castle Hain water and the Black Creek water you are available, you got mixing, but the plant just pumps treated Castle Hain water into the system and whatever mixing occurs is happening within the distribution system. And that varies every day because one well may be on today, you know, Black Creek well and be off tomorrow, and then one over here will be on today. So the, the composition of the mixing varies Change. by day, by location. So, so there's, t there's restrictions on when you use those particular wells? I mean, it's like on a rotation or? Yes, yeah. It, it, to manage the aquifer, you basically pump them for a period of time and you let them recover. And, and then, so a lot of, in a lot of cases, we have sort of sister wells. You know, we'll pump this one and then shut it down and turn the other one on. But generally speaking, you plan on pumping a well for 12 hours a day and then letting it rest for 12. But then, but then during peak times, obviously, you, you can pump more in that, but, but for proper aquifer management, you, you, you rotate the wells. The real challenge also is, um, is that we're all drawing out of the Castle Hain. Uh, you've got Camp Lejeune, you've got the city of Jacksonville, you've got Onwasa. And that is, you know, one of the main reasons we took this initiative on to try to get some relief on the Black Creek Aquifer. Because all of us drawing from that same system is causing a great deal of impact in that Castle Hain. Um, and that could lead to some water problems in the future. Uh, so it's real important that we manage it, uh, particularly for saltwater intrusion, because as you keep drawing and drawing and drawing, that's where you're getting your saltwater intrusion. Also, you're, you know, uh, you're limiting the amount of available water when everybody is drawing from the same pond, as I should say. One of the criteria of the state in terms of determining whether or not that 2018 reduction will take place is, is whether the Black Creek, since the last reduction, has increased rather than gone into a negative state. Do we have any data giving us any indication of what the status is since the last reduction? We do have, we do have data that we gather from our wells. Um, some of the, the four that we'll have to meet are the static water levels. We have to make sure that the static water levels are not declining. We have to make sure that the pumping water levels are not declining. And we have, we gather that information uh, on a periodic basis. I don't remember whether it's weekly or monthly, uh, but we keep that information. We all, another, uh, one of the key criteria are where the, pumps are set, they have to be above the top of the aquifer. Um, we are gathering our pump data to, and Dr. Sproul is working with us to analyze our pumps to see if we need to adjust any to comply with that criteria. And then the last one is dealing with chloride <coughs> concentrations. And we do have one well that shows higher chloride concentrations than our other wells. Uh, Dr. Sproul believes that that may be that well specifically and that it could either be screened in multiple aquifers or that it just that well could have problems and we need to go in there and fix them um, so that one's going to take more research when you say well, we don't have that information in terms of how the aquifer stands since they will, they will actually let you use uh, your your production wells that are not in use but so we are able to gain that information, and it's only for the past year. I think he's referring to the study that we're doing to, to look at its replenishing rate versus what the anticipated replenishment was. That's ongoing, as I'm that is. To understand it. So the data is not out yet. Yeah, the, the, the real quick, do we know if our well levels are, have declined? We have not seen a decline, but we're also pumping them less which is 
part of what will help the aquifer recharge. Other thing I would like to stress to council, I can assure you that we do monitor to make sure that we're within the annual pumping guidelines and That's criteria correct. of the state. I know earlier, uh, I guess it was actually last year, Mr. Bittner came and said that a person had told him that the city was violating that. We went back and looked at the records. It's very clear we're not violating the permit. We're not violating the maximum draws that we can have from the Black Creek. Yeah, see, because the That's draw correct. is based on an annual, annual. daily average. So if you go for a number of days without pumping, that means when you turn it on, you 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 know you can pump more than two million gallons you know, if the well is supported. Mm. So it's I mean, but, Mr. Mayor, <laughs> I'd move to award the contract to a leveling in the amount of five hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred ninety-two dollars and fifty cents, contingent upon the state revolving loan people approving the contract and the necessary work schedules. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion to be had here? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Wally. Thank you. Ms. Lindsay, if you'll join us, please. Next item we have uh, here, item number seven, is a uh, personnel policies and procedures that we uh, began discussing about two weeks ago, I think it was. Yes, sir. Uh, as we mentioned before, the City Council has given a, a mission of us updating the procedures and policies. Procedures are normally not required to be adopted by the Council. Your policy says that procedures that have to do with hiring, termination, and compensation do come through you, which we have no problem with. So tonight we're asking for further guidance so that we can proceed to hopefully adopt these in March with a discussion of the policies that have been before you for a while and the four procedures that deal with things such as compensation, hiring, and termination. City Attorney has worked closely with the Human Resource Department. Uh, we had briefed you all before and tonight we'd like to ask uh, for you to give us direction on specific policies you'd like to further discuss and then the discussion on the procedures. This evening we're also, after you have finished that discussion, if you're in a comfortable position with the answers, we would like for you to direct that this be placed on the next available agenda for formal adoption. But at this point, we would open it up to y'all to, uh, we don't really have a presentation because we gave the presentation right. before. Uh, I think there was some concerns last time, or, well not necessarily concerns per se, but. I think the council wanted more or less to sit back and try to digest a little bit more of this uh, information and uh, maybe ask some pertinent questions of the staff. Uh, so I guess if anybody has anything to bring up at this time, don't be bashful. And I've had an opportunity to review it and I didn't see anything mm -hmm. that stood out out of the ordinary. I thought it was a, a, a well done job by the staff. Thank you. I have no questions. I'll say here. Mr. Willingham, good. What we would then uh, propose is that this be placed on either the March 4th or March 18th agenda for you to formally adopt these policies and to formally adopt these four procedures. We will look at the availability of, of, of council time. The other thing that we would encourage you is should you have any additional thoughts between now and the 4th, roughly two weeks out, uh, we would certainly welcome you to direct those to the uh, city attorney or directly to the human resources department. Mm -hmm. Again, good job. Thank you very Thanks. much. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Uh, the next item we are going to discuss is the uh, commercial front end garbage collection. And I would assume that you may have some more additional information. Uh, yes, sir, just a, brief, uh, just a brief comment. Uh, as you will recall, we discussed this in some detail uh, several weeks ago. Uh, we did receive uh, some additional requests for information. We have provided that to you. I'm going to make some uh, brief comments, and then, as you're aware, uh, representatives from waste management are here with you this evening. They did ask the opportunity to meet with council members. 
uh, discussed this with the mayor. His suggestion was that if you felt you wanted to meet with them individually, that is fine, but that he would invite them here this evening so that you could have a dialogue uh, so that all of you could hear questions and answers at the same time. Basically, you know, we're at the end of the current contract with Waste Management. That is a contract that was set up for five years with two one-year extensions, and by the letter of the contract, we cannot extend it any further. We've gone through the bidding process. The city did give a price for doing the service. We have shown you that price, and we've also supplied you information on the details. We've also discussed with you the bids, and Waste Management was the low bidder. Generally, Waste Management's bid would increase their current service from $5.62 a tip to $5.99 a tip. That's for the first year. The other thing that the city attorney talked with you about is setting up exclusive versus non-exclusive. And so the options that we are asking direction on tonight really are, do you want to proceed with the private vendor? If so, do you want that to be an exclusive contract? Or do you want a private vendor and non-exclusive? The difference, obviously, <clears throat> pardon me, is not just procedurally what John will have to do or the city attorney will have to do for you, but if you do want exclusivity, we will have to adopt the necessary regulations and then award the bid. If you don't want exclusivity, then you can proceed to award the bid if that's the direction that you so choose. The non-exclusive, though, means that it would be an open market. People could still use the city's bulk purchasing power if they wanted, or they could use any vendor if they so chose, and they could negotiate a private contract with that vendor. If the city service is selected, we would say to you that the only way we can recommend the city service is with an exclusive contract. Why? Because you have roughly 820, 830 uh, customers out there, and in order to secure the necessary funding to get into the business, we believe that exclusivity is the best way to protect your revenue stream. And of course, the fourth option for you is always available, and that's simply to say, the city is going to get out of this business completely. We're not going to award a bid. We're not gonna ask the city crews to do it. We're simply gonna let the private sector do it. And if waste management wants to do individual contracts with individual companies, if waste industries wants to do them with individual companies, that's how the free market would work. Under options one, two, and three, the city is responsible for the billing and collection. And they're also, the city's also responsible for all of the, what I'll call headaches side. That's why uh, Kerry is not looking quite as young today as he did a week ago, because he is responsible for solving all the headaches. And we appreciate the fine job that he has done in doing this. You have seen this in your uh, council information. You asked for details on how we came up with the cost that the city would charge. This is a, an analysis that shows you for the next five years what our salaries, uniforms, fuel, and other items would be. You have also uh, seen their debt service, and you know from former testimony that we are in the process now, if you so direct us to proceed, we have secured the necessary equipment that we can buy. It's a combination of generally new to generally used. It's also, uh, we have arranged uh, funding for financing over a five-year period through a local bank at 1.25% if you choose to do this. You can also see at the bottom of this the number of customers or tips while you may have 820 to 830 customers, your real interesting or important number is how many tips do you have? Because it's every time you tip the container, that's where you make money. It's not how many customers you have. You'll notice there are roughly 125,000 tips per year. And you can see that the city's proposed rate, if you have the city do it, is shown across the bottom. And yes, we did show an increase each year over five years. I would also remind you that our highest number at five years is still 15 cents lower than the current bid for bid for year one. Here are some reasons that the city can provide at a lower rate. Uh, several of you ask, isn't it odd, isn't it normal that the private sector can do things cheaper than the public sector? And the answer is yes, it's usually that case. Here are the reasons though why we believe we can do it at a less expensive price. Number one, fuel cost. 
we buy it in bulk. We don't pay the state and federal taxes. I know that in conversation uh, with one of the council members, he asked uh, about information that waste management had that, that their fuel cost is over $150,000 while the city is projecting substantially less. We provided an answer on that. Second reason why we believe is borrowing rates. When we buy equipment, we're able to get it at a tax exempt rate. And 1.25% is what we have built this performer around. We have a bank that is committed to giving you that if that's the direction you so choose. There is no profit margin with the city. You know, we are service oriented. We're not intended to make a profit. The other is our insurance rates are through the league, bulk purchasing. There is no bond required. Now, some have said, well, it's not fair to require a private vendor to give a bond and the city not. Well, that's something that, uh, yes, a $400,000 bond for a private vendor costs money. We do not have that bond because we know that if we're not able to perform it one way, we have sanitation crews that can perform it a different way. One of the options that, uh, that you could do, I suppose, is to uh, go back and direct that uh, any bond requirement that could be waived. However, we would not recommend that because if the private vendor is to use the service and they do not perform, we must be ready to perform that service. The last thing is the support services. You know, it's not like we're getting into this business brand new. We run sanitation trucks every day. We already have the, uh, the shop basically set up. You have seen that we'll add one mechanic, but basically all of the physical plant and all the managerial staff that's needed is already in place. Those are reasons why we believe that we did in fact give you a quality bid, one that you can count on. I think at the end of the discussion though, it really comes down to this, and that is what level of customer service do you want? And are you comfortable with that level of customer service being provided through the bid process and a private vendor? Or are you comfortable with that being provided through city staff? I will say to you from our position as your management, uh, you make the call. All we're asking for you is to make a call. Because if you want us to get into this business, <coughs> we really need to know tonight. Why? because we've got people who are holding trucks and equipment that they are going to sell to someone else if we don't give them direction. We have a bank that has pledged to give us the rate, but they're not going to hold that rate forever and ever. And likewise, it's one of those things where if you choose to go with the private vendor, staff is going to understand that. There are complete, you know, there are issues and pressures that are upon each of you as elected officials and you have to decide which option you are the most comfortable with. So you know, with that, uh, I would uh, end this part and would uh, invite Mayor, if it's okay with you, uh, the Waste Management folks to come up and express some of their thoughts. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor Phillips, members of the council and city staff, my name is Chip Dodd with Waste Management, and I pre very much appreciate y'all letting us um, make some comments tonight. I'd like to introduce my colleagues who are here with me tonight. Laura Snow, she is the district manager of our Jacksonville operation and our Wilmington operation. And then I've got Ren McKinnon over here, and he is the site manager for our Jacksonville operation. Um, both bring lots of experience and knowledge to their positions. They've been in place for about a year and a half. They've brought improvements to the Jacksonville office um, and we are delighted to have them here. Um, they are both very involved in the daily operations of the Jacksonville commercial collection um, contract and they are committed and dedicated to providing the highest quality service to the city of Jacksonville. Um, in the last workshop meeting, we were um, glad to hear about the um, survey that Dr. Woodruff um, explained that where you all survey 20% of your commercial customers or our commercial customers and that they reported that their service was great. We, we feel that that is 
an, a, um, a reflection of waste management and the city of Jacksonville working together to provide good service and we are here tonight to let you know that we very much would like to continue um, providing the co commercial collection service to you and it is so indicated in our bid that we have submitted being the lowest and the most competitive one. Uh, obviously, by our holding the contract now, we know what it takes to do the work and to do it right, and we know what it costs. Um, in looking at the city's estimates that you were just glancing at, we see a couple of places in particular where we feel that the estimates are very low and those are in the fuel and maintenance line items the city's estimate for fuel for the first year is fifty four thousand dollars we understand there are no taxes in that so we looked at our fuel costs for the jacksonville contract we took out the taxes and conservatively, we are spending a hundred more than $100,000 a year on fuel. That is almost double what the city has, has listed as an estimate. The city also says that they have based fuel and maintenance costs on a side load truck or side load trucks. Well, for your commercial collection, you are going to have to have a front end load truck. And a front end load truck is more costly as far as fuel and maintenance than a side load truck. We looked um, for averages in our regional area and it covered about 800 trucks. And we learned that on average, Fuel usage is 26% higher on a front end truck than it is on a side load truck. On average, the maintenance costs for a front end truck is 31% higher than it is on a side load truck. Also on the city's estimate, we didn't see any cost for the recycling dumpsters that are out there and currently waste management has about 56 recycling dumpsters placed around the city. And if the city buys those containers, it will be, if the city has to buy uh, front end dumpsters, it will, it will cost somewhere around $40,000. For a moment, let's look at the uh, lift prices. The city submitted an estimate of $5.63 per lift and waste management submitted a bid of $5.99 per lift. That's 36 cents difference per lift. If you run that out per year, it's about $46,000. Think about this. What if the city needed one more truck than they estimated? What if the city needed one more employee than they estimated? As you can see quickly, the $46,000 in savings vanishes. There are other risks. What about unforeseen property damages, like damages to corrals, or damages to driveways, or damages to parked vehicles? What if there's a vehicle accident or an employee injury? Waste management covers all these risks. And as you would imagine, safety is of utmost importance. And our focus on safety is reflected in the fact that our Jacksonville operation has remained accident and injury free for two years. The past two years, we have not had an accident or an injury. We're um, quite proud of that. And it is an accomplishment in our industry. In closing, I just would like to say that the city of Jacksonville's commercial collection contract is vital to waste management and our Jacksonville operation. We are confident that we can provide great service and that we can do it less than the city can. We've served the Jacksonville community for 15 years and we would like to be here another 15 years. 
Tonight, my colleagues and I are here to ask for your support and approval of our bid. We are committed to working with you, communicating with you, and providing outstanding service. Again, thank you for um, letting me join you tonight. And um, I just I made some notes on your um, estimate sheet, um, some of the figures that I just went over, and so I'll pass those out. Is there anyone on council has any uh, questions? Mr. Dodd. I have a question. All right. Mr. Dodd, what do you think that it would cost you to administer the the uh, clerical aspect of the operation, billing, and customer uh, customer setup and 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 uh, maintenance? What do you think a cost associated with that be? I don't know that we um, can project the cost just off the top of, top of our head, but you know we've got a customer service program set up that we could mesh the city of Jacksonville into. Laura, you might have some the, more. The cost would be minimal. I mean, we have already have the resources and the structure in place to to absorb those calls in that setup. Um, and, and we do this for municipalities across the area and across the country. So um, you do what? You do the billing and the mm -hmm. setup, and mm -hmm. the -up where we have a franchise agreement or, or an exclusive contract such as this, and we and we do those tasks. We handle it from A to Z um, under the contract. So um, with, without giving you an exact number, it would be minimal. Would that change the cost of your bid? I, I think we could absorb it without additional cost. Uh, yes, sir. Um, my understanding is that your contract or bid would not include weekend um, pickup? No, the current setup, it does not include weekend setup. And that is something that this that um, was not in the bid to provide Saturday service, but it may be something the city wants to look at because there are some customers with that need. And right now those customers are using the city service and, and waste management to service them throughout the week. And then they are going through a private contract for a Saturday service. And you do have quite a few restaurants that may benefit from that service without knowing the exact volume of the customers you, it might take a little bit of research, but no, that is the Saturday service isn't included in its current form. Is the county landfill open on the weekend? It is on Saturdays it all day. On Saturdays. I just got some kind of questions and comments, I guess, since Richard's down there. On Robert's uh, or the email that we got, you know, I think it was interesting that. You know, you you send your drivers out for. I mean, I know just from my own personal experience, I'll be out getting paper at 5:30 or 6 o'clock in the morning, and I hear the trucks out at St. Anne's Daycare, and I know they're going down to Brookwood Baptist Daycare at, at 5:30, 6 o'clock. So you run your trucks off normal business hours, which I think is an advantage for the customer. That you know, I. I feel almost nervous about sending our trucks out there after 8 o'clock every day when the Brookwood Baptist is parking lots full, the daycares, the moms are dropping their kids off at daycare, and then you, you're, the big trucks, our big trucks, their big trucks, somebody's big trucks are going to be out there trying to maneuver during what can be rush hour. I mean, we'll be having our trucks out there, obviously, all day. I mean, not all well, day. Yeah, actually, if I may clarify. Uh, we intend to run a schedule that will be an early morning schedule the same as waste management does. And the reason why is because you can't service commercial businesses when the parking lots are full right, right. and when people are blocking the dumpsters. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're in city or waste management, you're going to be running an early operation. And so whether it's waste management of the city, we're going to be out there, we, meaning waste management of the city, we're going to be out there at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning catching as many of the dumpsters as we possibly can in those hours. So we're going to have proposal. a new schedule for our, our sanitation people. We're not going to run concurrent with the existing for schedule. The, for the commercial collection, you would run a schedule that's almost identical to what waste management proposed. Well, not exactly, because it said that, uh, you know, they run their drivers 10 
11 and a half hours a day. And it says that they run their, because when you responded to it, it said that the waste management runs different truck levels on different days. Correct. That they, Monday, they send out four trucks, Tuesday three, Wednesday two, Thursday four, th Friday four, where we're going to spread out the routes evenly across the, the week. And, you know, to me, that tells me that when waste management has a line at their cash register, they open another register. They put out, they're going to be working 45, 46 hours a day on Monday, where we're going to work 32. Eight times four, correct? Four trucks, eight hours. So there's 12 hours of pickup on Monday, when the demand is probably the highest after the weekend. That's when a business generates, I mean, most of our, the business I had, the, was the busiest time was the weekends after the weekend. So they, and then also by Wednesday, when the demand has declined, they're flexible enough, they pull back to two trucks. So, but we're gonna, we're not gonna affect the demand. The demand is gonna stay the same. I mean, we, we're not gonna affect demand. We're just gonna affect the level of service. We're gonna push the service out continuously, ignoring the demand. I mean, they've adapted to the, to the needs of the customers, in my view. So, are we going to have trucks out there on Wednesday picking up what was supposed was was being picked up on Monday? It. I think they're doing a good job. I mean, Kerry gave me after our last meeting. He gave me their complaint. You know, the complaint sheet, and I have it here, and we looked at it and stuff. And there were complaints. Um, gosh, I wish I had it right there. But it was over a year and a half period. They had four five pages of, of different complaints. Well, a year and a half, they've done 200,000 cliffs. I mean, how, you know, you're going to have some problems. I mean, I can understand the unhappiness. I want to say, too, that I do appreciate everything that's been done for the city as far as improvements of trash appearance and such. And I, th and I feel that must be our motivation. In other words, we've, got comp we've had these complaints, and we want to take this over to address the complaints. But when you're doing two, when you're doing 125,000 a year of anything, you're not going to you're not going to achieve perfection. And you know, people, the guys pull up to the container, they <coughs> dump it in the truck. I mean, they can't help at times if people haven't bagged their trash, if there's loose trash, if it's real windy. I mean, I'm sure we could do a little bit better job. Again, I I respect their experience in contrast to our estimates. Uh, you know, they, they've done it. They know what it takes. They've done it in other cities. To think that we can jump in and do it cheaper. Now we're saying we can do it less expensive than they can. I remember, what was it, last August, they had multiple breakdowns. Their trucks were down. Well, if we remember, we haven't exactly been generous with them over the years. It seems like every time they came for a little bit of fuel adjustment, we were pretty tough on them. In fact, we denied it more than right. I remember Mayor Patel Lazar was pretty adamant at uh, holding those costs down to businesses. It's a job, it's, you know, we're talking about hiring five new employees, of, or five new sanitation, one new fleet, six more employees. That's 1%, that's 1% growth in our personnel. <laughs> and all the ancillary additions down to finance, insurance, those type of coverages. If what that guy told me in college about economic equilibrium, then I would have to assume that there, if we hire five or six people to do a job, there's going to be five or six people out of a job in the private sector. You know, I'm glad we can save the money on our fuel bills. But how are we saving it? By not paying the road tax that we're driving the big trucks across. So we're, is that, is that right? I mean, I know we, we've got the advantage and we're going to use the advantage, but yet we're going to send the trucks out there and use the same roads and wear them up, wear them out just like everybody else, but not contribute to the maintenance of the trucks. <clears throat> Finally, I mean, when this all began, we 
were asked to give permission to sanitation to submit a deed. But what have we got? We've got a proposal that includes creating a monopoly for them. This is not, I mean, I, I was skeptical when they asked for the bid, but I thought I'll keep an open mind. Maybe there's some, you know, some real advantage that they can identify, some real need. But what we have is a proposal. It's not a true bid. We're backstopping it. There's no risk to us. If our costs exceed our estimates, it will be passed along. That was made clear. That was part of the conditions. That if our costs exceed what we said, we're not going to take it in the general fund. We're going to pass it right on to the businesses. And last of all, I, you know, I've thought about it a lot, obviously, since the last meeting, and I didn't know who to talk to, but the only person I could think to talk to that would have any historical knowledge was Mike Elsey. You know, he was here, former utility. And so I went to see Mike, and I said, well, Mike, in 1982, why did they give it up? You know, you were doing it back then. Why would you even give it up? And he said, it was because it was cheaper to go commercial. And I, and I cannot help but believe, and I appreciate, and I, I believe these guys have done the best job, the most honest representation they can give us. And I believe in Richard, I believe in Kerry, that they maybe could do it. But I also know they're not going to be here forever. They're not always going to be the ones administering this. It, it looks good on this piece of paper, but in my heart of hearts, knowing business, I just, I, I can't believe it's going to be the best in the long run for our customers. It may be better for us that we have more control over these complaints, <clears throat> but I, I'm, I'm unconvinced this is a, a job that we want that's going to give us the benefits for all of the effort involved. There's such a small room for improvement. I mean, we've had, like I said, the, we've had issues, but they're addressed, and it's, it's constant. It's not just with these folks. It was Mike Elby was telling me about it ever since. It's always going to be that way. But in my heart of hearts, I think someone that does it worldwide, that's in the business all over the country, all over the world, they've got to have a leg up on us. I mean, that's, that's how, you know, that's how it comes down to me. I appreciate what's happened, but I think just the fact that we're told that we, again, it was presented, can I give a bid, implying that I'm going to compete, I'm going to open I'm going to get out there and compete. And then when it comes down to, first you have to eliminate competition. Then I'll take the job. It, it doesn't, doesn't play through for me. The only comment I would make, I, I certainly don't take uh, any ombrage with any of the comments that uh, Mr. Thomas has had. You know, you're at a, uh, at a decision. Uh, we did not call ours a bid because the city attorney recommended that a bid is implied. I, implies Response. something. Uh, as you'll remember, what I've said to you is if we are going to get into this, you should get into this because you want better service. This is not an issue of price. I'm not going to throw them under the truck, usually say under the bus, but since they don't have the buses. <laughs> but I will remind you, this past year we have had service deficiencies. I will tell you, the staff did not waste their time because we wanted to get into this business. We spent the many, many, many hours analyzing this because we're interested in the same thing you're interested in, and that's service. I will say to you, if you're more comfortable with the prices that waste management can give you, and they will give you a pledge that they're not going to give you the same service they've been giving you, but they're going to give you better service. That's something you should consider. <clears throat> but I'll remind you again, it has been about service. We had many weeks where we had to send city sanitation crews out to crawl in commercial dumpsters to clean it out because their equipment was broken down. I would say to you this, if you're going to give them the bid, which I have no problem with you doing, 
you must demand from them a service level that is better than what you've gotten the last two years. And you must demand that they have plan B. We haven't seen plan B. They may be part of a multinational or a, a certainly a, a very large corporation. Where are the spare trucks when we've needed them? Why aren't they running a truck that was operational in the morning when another, another truck broke down that morning? Why aren't they running that at night? I will say to you, as the manager, I am very disappointed in their service level. But I will also say to you this, the staff is going to honor any decision you make. What we are after, though, is not price. We're after service, and we're after dependable service. And if you believe the best thing to do is to go with waste management, and they're willing to give you a pledge of quality service better than what you've had the last two years, then I would endorse that. I would also say to you this, if they are willing to take the billing and collection completely off the city system for the same price, that's a pretty good deal. Because if you think about all the postage that we save them today, because we don't mail it out individually, it's part of your utility bill. When you think of all of the staff time that Kerry and his people put into solving problems that they're now going to take over, if you think about all the billing and collection time that Gail and Sabrina and the finance department is putting in and they're willing to take it over, that's a pretty good deal. Because as Mr. Thomas has eloquently said, whatever the city does, we have to supply staff to do it. And if they're willing to do more for the same price, then that has implications. <clears throat> Other members of council want to weigh in on this? Okay. Mayor Putin, Thank you. Um, and I've been struggling with this same issue, and I'm and I'm an end user, as right. most of you know, and I've commented on this. Um, so I've, I've struggled with this because you know I personally have seen the complaints and the level of service drop, even in my location. Thursdays were no notorious for not getting picked up. So your analogy doesn't really follow through on what's actually happening. I've had more no Thursday pickups than Mondays well, for whatever reason. And I know that I've had to call and the city has, has come out. So I'm struggling with this because I don't believe in bigger government either. And I don't believe government should compete with private sector. And again, in looking at the, the bid proposal, again, the city doesn't pay highway tax. So I've had, you know, it's kind of an unfair bidding process. And I agree with you 100% there. So. I, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I'm disappointed that there's only two uh, businesses that, that put in the bid. Um, I believe there should be more, but there's not. So that almost an unfair uh, disadvantage to the, to the local business people that, that need that service. Um, I am in agreement with, uh, uh, with Randy that if we were to go, outside the city for a bid uh, approval, I don't think the city should spend its resources to provide billing. I, 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 we're using city staff, city money, city time to provide clerical resources that we don't get one penny for. We don't get one penny to provide those services. We receive all the complaints and we provide all the resources to administer the fund collection in order to forward them to your company. I don't agree with that at all. Taxpayers shouldn't pay for that. Uh, so if we go a private route, I'm not going to vote for it unless it includes the whole ball of wax. That's just me. So in one hand, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you don't want the city to be involved and use taxpayers' money, then the private sector should take on the whole expense, and the bid should include that expense, whatever that may be. So it needs to be fair, apples to apples, or it's not going to work f for me. Um, so I agree with Richard. If it does go to a private sector, the service has to get better because this year has been difficult for the city. We've responded to a numerous amount of complaints. Uh, 
and it's happened to me. So, and the other thing is the drivers will not get out of the vehicle if there's anything that prohibits them from driving up, picking it up, <coughs> dumping it. You have a trash bag that's hanging over because somebody decided to go dumpster diving, they're going to leave it on the ground. And the employees have to come up, pick it up. That happens all the time. It happens to restaurants all the time. Where, you know, it's so full because they've been busy or whatever the situation is, you may have a dumpster that are extremely full. By the time they dump, if one drops on the ground, the driver's not going to get out to pick it up. That doesn't happen. And these are real life stories that I'm talking about here. Uh, things that we don't talk about through the bidding process. So when you talk about a level of service, it needs to be a level of service and give people what they're paying for. If you're going to charge them, provide the service. Uh, to get an excuse why a dumpster didn't get dumped doesn't help very much when you have a restaurant and you have no place to put your trash. And the health department comes and takes 10 points off of you and, and threatens to shut you down because your trash is sitting out by the dumpster and not in the dumpster. You all know that. Um, so it's a challenge for me because I could go either way, and I'm not sold on either one, but I, I, I'm challenged mm -hmm. for discussion purposes. So if, if, we, if they were to take on their billing, they would collect the tipping fee, not just the tip charge, but they would collect the money that has to go to the landfill? They'd have to, now in, in fairness to the process, let's talk about that in a second. The bid that was structured <laughs> assumed that the city, it actually stated that the city is going to continue to bill and collect and pay the landfill. You know, now the attorney can give you guidance here, you know, if you want us to consider rebidding or whatever. Now the waste management wants to accept the fact that they will take those on at the same level. But what we're, what we're saying is that the bid was structured that the city would pay all of those fees. And it is, uh, I'm not quite sure, Gail, you, mean to, you may need to come up and talk about how the landfill <laughs> charge is added or carry. Um, well, carry knows more about the landfill charges than I do. Why don't you take my seat for <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not sure how we would do that as far as the finance department is concerned because we, uh, we take our material to the landfill and the landfill charges and gives us a ticket and gives us a bill at the end of the month, a total bill for the charges. And then we audit that bill with the tickets that we have and then submit that bill to the, the finance department to pay. Now there's, there's probably going to have to be some kind of system in place if, if waste management is going to take over the whole ball of wax where we have to separate something out as far as that the, what's billed to the what's billed to the customers as far as their water and sewer bill is concerned, and what's billed to the customers as far as their tipping fee is concerned. I don't know how that's going to work. Again, Gail would know better than I do about that. But there's going to have to be some type of separation because waste management has to be paid out of those funds that we collect. Also, that we're collecting now, they're paid out of those funds. That's so, so right now, if the tipping fee goes up, is raised by the county, we eat that? No, no, sir. Yeah. If the we tipping fee, the yeah, if the tipping fee goes up, we change the fees on the on the rates that we charge the commercial customer, and we also change the fees on the residential customer. Okay, if the right. goes just, up. To, what, just what, to satisfy <coughs> my curiosity, let me ask the representative from waste management. Uh, you have this in place in other. Areas yes, where, if, where you play. if you wanted waste management to handle it from A to Z, meaning we would pay the landfill bill and we would include it, we could do that and it would be very easy for us to do that. However, it would change your bid number. We would not be able to do it at the current number we provided because your disposal. That's not what you said earlier when I asked you. Well, that's, we that's could take kind of over the administrative part of handling the customer setup, the customer complaints. However, the billing of the disposal piece, is a, it's large. It could not be absorbed in that number, but the clerical aspect of setting a customer up, handling, answering that phone, et cetera, we could handle at the current rate. But the disposal is um, a separate animal. Well, if, 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 going back to your comments, if we're going to get bids, they need to be 
equal bids. Mm -hmm. well, I think so if they're going to take it on, they're going to need to give us a bid that includes that. Why should the city provide that for free? I mean, it, that's just obviously tradition. I mean, that's well, biggest, I mean, outside you know, that's, of that. Yeah, that's uh, just that was for control too, so they they would know it would get paid. I mean, it, I, I would be less comfortable putting it on them because they don't. The customer say a customer gets in trouble just in business. I mean, if they don't pay their water bill, their water's cut off. It's all over. If they don't pay waste management, and waste management says I'm not picking up their dumpster, then we've got a mountain of trash out behind somebody's place. Well, so I think we're giving up too much. Well, if again, we take you, it off you, there. you see the scale, though. It's it's not clear cut when you talk about the city, and that's where I'm struggling. It's not clear cut on turning it over because when we turn it over to the private sector, now we're giving less protection to to the local business owners, just as you indicated. Now it's a free market. Rates could go up every five months, three months, six months, 12 months. But if it was wide open, they then it could cut off at any given with time. Keep, with keep so there's some the benefit market. for the city yeah. to be involved. The only argument I would have against the competition argument is that only two folks bid on this on this thing. There is not well, much they, commercial. They knew they were bidding <laughs> against the house. We are the house. I mean, yeah. they knew we were. One of, the, one of the options is, uh, is just free market. Right. What's, what's a, what's, what if we just said we're, we're not going to negotiate for the commercial customers anymore mm -hmm. and let the free market, let them, let the commercial customers uh, deal with whoever they want to deal with? What's, what's the downside to that? What's the downside, uh, Kerry and Richard, to letting, letting the free market let, let the commercial customers uh, negotiate with whoever they want to do when we don't worry about the city being involved in, in, in handling the bills, paying all the expense of administra administering the, the collections, the receivables, the billings. Well, one of the things that I can think of offhand is, number one, you're making the, the commercial customers going to be at the mercy of prices. You know that for a fact. I mean, if they know that's, that's what they are, and, and all the other things they do. Yes, sir. And then the other thing is, I'm not I'm not comfortable with the fact that that the commercial customer right now will have enough time to adjust to that particular situation of going uh, open market. We have a lot of businesses in town that literally don't handle the garbage collection service or pay for the garbage collection service here in Jacksonville. They have national uh, uh, customers that take care of their garbage collection. So those individuals would also have to be notified if we go to a free market system in order to be able to, to determine who they want to collect their service. So there's, to me, there's the, the system that we have, either it's through com contract or through the city, is, is more beneficial, more suited for the, for the commercial customer than simply opening it up for the free market and simply trying to make, hey, you can have whomever you want to do it. Um, I think if, if you're interested, and I don't mean to speak for the council, but if you're interested in, in waste management taking over <coughs> some part of the administrative part, I truly still think that the city should have the revenue stream. Uh, and I just, I just think that, that we should control the revenue stream. If we need to pay waste <coughs> management, that's fine. If we pay the landfill, that's fine. The, the administrative stuff as far as the customers and, and, and taking care of the complaints, if you wish for them to do that, that that's fine. But I think the city should be in control of the revenue stream. Let me answer this. Go ahead, sir. We've seen examples of the current situation where we have a contract and the, the contractor has not performed on some occasions and the city has had to step in and supplement that. How on earth would you manage that if you had a free market system and they fail to live up to their contract. They would, the, the customer would, would try to find somebody else to and if, fulfill. And if the garbage is there, and then we don't have any contractual relationship with the myriad of private contractors, mm -hmm. unlike we have with waste management, when arguably, if we do have to step in, there's still some contractual relationship there. You just did away with that. Part, part of my argument, I'm not necessarily arguing for that. I'm just trying to okay. trying to throw something out there story. and let's talk about it. Right. And, and, and part of it, I think, you know, it talks a little bit against what Randy was trying to point out. And, you know, 
and he has some good points, but there's also some good points right. on the other side. So I'm just trying to want to throw that out there. There are, there are some cities that even allow the free market to uh, handle residential garbage. Yeah, right. But, the county, but county I'll does. tell you what, every time I've been in one of those, and it's a mess. Well, the, the, the county, if you're a county you customer, you, county you, resident, you, 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 you cannot do. control the quality of service that way, both residential and commercial. You, you're just asking for all kind of problems and poor, poor customer service. And I think Mr. Warden was just using that as a I understand. Just to, to a certain extent. And although yeah, part of the right, I think it would be. A, and I, a I think mess. one of the things we're missing here is that even if the council decides to let the city handle this business, I don't pursue this or perceive this as a lifetime service. We could open it up for bid every couple of years to verify that we're providing an efficient service compared to the private private market. Only, the only problem with that is that there's a um, in base in investment in. Yeah. I understand. Well, you, you can't <laughs> sell, yeah. sell it. I mean, you can't sell okay. it. You sell okay. it. You can't. Sell it. Okay. Okay. Just as just as another thought, uh, uh, the, the statement the statement was made that the difference in tipping fee or the difference in in tipping fee, uh, five cities five sixty three, the uh, waste management five ninety nine was equal to about forty six thousand dollars a year. I find it hard for me to believe that they're making a gross profit of only $46,000 a year off of that. So what that tells me is that our estimate may in fact be a little bit fat. Well, just, I mean, just that, one, that's how it was presented. One, one thing to look at. <laughs> well, it was presented to us with a lot of inflators. I don't, I don't believe that, that they're make, I don't believe that they're they're only I, making $46,000 a year. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then our estimate is high. If, if in fact that's a true statement, and that's a gross, that's a gross profit. They got to cover out of that forty-six thousand dollars. They got to cover his salary, her salary, part of part of chips or part of hers. How would they do it? So well, that's figured into their. I agree. Yeah. I, that's why I'm saying that's there's some. It tells me our estimate could potentially be a little bit fat. Just as a comment. It could be potentially. Could, could, and, and it could and it could be uh, potentially late. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with yeah. that statement. Now, I don't know I, what the I, tipping I, fee was in 1982, but I know my water bill was eight dollars, and now it's eighty. So sure, you know, <laughs> we can tell you what's <laughs> uh, <laughs> your water. Your water bill is not eighty. <laughs> My water bill's not? No. Water, oh, okay, sewer, okay, okay, okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bill I paid at my house was eight, and it's, it's gone to 80. I don't know. It's, it's I'll be gone. Your property a lot of help with that. Yes, sir. Uh, um, Dr. Woodruff or Mr. Terrell, can you give um, maybe an uh, estimate? maybe for the last past three years that when waste management hasn't been able to fulfill their responsibilities and duties and the sanitation department has had to have crews to go out and pick up her, how much is that actually costing the city? Now, I'm, I want to be I want to be fair to waste management. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we have had some instances where routes have not been finished and they had savvy service. When we talk about the sanitation crews going out and, and, and correcting a problem, mm -hmm. That has been four, maybe five times. Okay. You know, it, it's not been something that has been every month or every week or something like that. We've had situations where I think uh, a dumpsters have been too heavy or with liquid and stuff. We've gone over with our boom truck and scooped the stuff out of it so that so that it can be lifted. Um, we've had uh, I think a, a sim situation similar to that at, at, at Cheddar's that we did that. So it's not been a, a regular instance that that's happened. But we, and, and I think Ren knows this, but we have had some uh, instances where routes have not been finished that we had to go over on service. And that's, that's been more than four or five or six or seven times. I'll give you an example. Okay. When, when uh, Panera Bread opened, uh, unfortunately, when the uh, equipment failures occurred with waste management, we had to send our crews out there. We did not charge them for equipment. We just simply charged them for labor. I think the bill came to like $200. You know, we weren't, uh, it doesn't take us all day long to empty a dumpster. You send a three or four person crew out there and, and uh, it's not a very pleasant job, but they're not there more than a half an hour. So it's not that, it's not that our servicing their failures is a large financial burden to the city. 
I mean, that's that's just not the case. And I think it really uh, it just comes down to this. At at the end of the day, you have to decide what are you more comfortable with. I will tell you, as as your manager, I know the budgetary difficulties. We're all going to sit around this table and discuss the rest of this year. It is not going to be a fun next four months. It's just not going to be. We are facing some major financial things. And if you believe that this is the soundest fiscal policy to leave it in the hands of waste management because you have certainty, then that's what I recommend you do as long as you're accepting the level of service that they have shown, not what they're promising, but what they have shown. If you want us to rebid it and include all of the services the city is presently providing, we can certainly do that. But time is also running out. We have to have some direction. I would say to you that nobody is in a better sweep business position in this community than waste management. And it's exactly why Mr. Thomas pointed out. They get guaranteed money. Every tip is collected. I mean, why? Because the city is the one who is doing all of their, if you pardon the pun, all the heavy lifting here. We're doing the billing, we're doing the collecting, we're using the full force and weight of the city's utilities to make sure that they get every penny. And guess what? If there's a shortage, they're not currently eating it. The city is. Again, the main thing that we need from y'all tonight is, is some direction. We're not opposed to staying with waste management. If you want to stay with waste management, we will do the best we can to continue to provide good service through them. But if you want to convert to the city, we really need to know because we've got vendors holding equipment and they've been holding it for about a month now saying we can only hold it so long. I'd like to uh, just jump in here. We're in a, it seems to me we're in a commercial garbage collection business right now in terms of handling the complaints and doing the billing, both of which I think are significant cost items. Uh, notwithstanding waste management saying it's a nominal cost. If we can do better service, and I think this thing boils down to service, and do it at a less cost, which is less cost to some of our biggest taxpayers, our commercial tax base, then I think we should do it. And at this point, you know, I'm inclined to give the city the opportunity to provide this service. Uh, and again, it should be reviewed as every other city service every year at budget time to make sure that we're providing the best possible service at the best possible cost to our, to our taxpayers and ratepayers. This is not up for a vote tonight. This is up. Well, we oh, yeah. we could oh, yeah. we could do that. Okay. Uh, well, then I'm going to make a motion. They're they're asking for a direction. I'm going to make a motion that we award the contract uh, or the service. We decline the bids and award the service to the cities to the city. Then you need to con add to your motion that we pass the ordinance required to grant them exclusivity. Yes, that that. that. That that would be what your motion's contingent on too. Is that that's correct? fine if that's what the attorney wishes. I'll make that as part of my motion. Well, all I've got to go on is my gut feeling, and that's my gut says we we, we go that right. I'll second the motion. We've had uh, quite a bit of discussion. Is there any other comments or discussion? I guess my last Call comment was we're we're developing developing a monopoly, and that always works out for you. <clears throat> any other? All right, have a motion and a, and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. Is that just one nay?
All right, let's take a, a break before we get into the uh, CIP discussion. And, uh, come back in maybe 15 minutes. Okay.